Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Jason Voorhees kills. Oh, this sucks on so many levels! <laughs> for this list, we'll be ranking the deadliest and most infamous instances where Jason Voorhees caused someone's violent demise. Since Jason doesn't do any of the killing in either the original Friday the 13th or Part 5, A New Beginning, those films will be omitted from this list. We're also giving a spoiler alert, although we kind of figured most of these characters wouldn't survive. Did we leave any outs? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Crushing Headache Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives The climax to Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives sees a final confrontation at the grounds of the former Camp Crystal Lake. The surrounding area is renamed Forest Green by the town to avoid the negative connotations associated with the Voorhees murder sprees but Jason is drawn there nonetheless and continues his rampage. Sheriff Garris and his deputies Pappas and Thornton are on the scene while Tommy Jarvis is setting up a trap, and it's here where Jason commits a skull-crushing finale to one of the officers. Pappas puts five bullets into Jason with no effect. Voorhees grabs a skull, and a crackling sound fills the air. Garris later finds his deputy's body and the aftermath. Number 19. Ripped in Half Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday Jason Goes to Hell is a somewhat underappreciated entry into the Friday franchise, largely maligned because of its decision to make Jason a supernatural force capable of possession. <laughs> We honestly appreciate the fact that it tried something different, although some things, well, some things remain the same. Case in point, Voorhees hunting down anyone caught fornicating within 100 yards of the hockey-masked psychopath. Deborah and Luke find this out the hard way when Jason tears through their tent, coitus interruptus, and then tears through Deborah with a metal pole. Gross. Number 18, Trapped and Burned, Friday the 13th. Even though Jason didn't commit any of the murders in the original Friday the 13th, this 2009 remake from producer Michael Bay goes a different route. Here we have a fully grown Voorhees who's already machete deep in mommy issues, so he has no qualms about getting down to business stalking some unsuspecting young people. Amanda gets the worst of it early on and is trapped inside of a sleeping bag and left to be burned alive. The scene is mean-spirited, not only due to Amanda's prolonged suffering, but also the fact that her boyfriend Richie has been laid out by a bear trap set by Jason and has to stand by and watch the entire thing play out. Number 17, Death on the Dance Floor. Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. There was little room for character development by the time Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan hit the theaters in 1989. At this point, half of the cast is pretty much cannon fodder for Voorhees, such as the subject of our next entry, Eva Watanabe. The role of Watanabe was an early one for the future Vampire Diaries star Kelly Hu, and she serves as a relatively sweet and undeserving victim of Jason's wrath. The scene itself is peppered with hallucinogenic imagery as Jason stalks her on the party deck of a cruise ship with the overall effect being dizzying and disorienting. Here, it's not the manner in which Jason strangles Eva that's notable, but the execution, no pun intended, that's the real star. Number 16. A Despicable Dude Gets His Due Friday the 13th if Eva Watanabe got done dirty by Jason Voorhees, then Trent Sutton absolutely deserved everything that was coming to him in the 2009 Friday remake. I would probably leave soon before I get pissed off and... Yeah. Yeah. What happens then? Trent is so obnoxious, antagonistic, and boorish that it's difficult to believe he has any friends at all, never mind a group with which to go away for the weekend. Yet Sutton makes it through a lion's share of the film before finally meeting his maker, thanks to a well-timed toss from Jason. 
Trent is impaled on some spikes that were conveniently left upright on a pickup truck. And we just gotta be honest, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Number 15, Corkscrew and Cleaver, Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter is largely lauded as a high point for the franchise. It retains the early entry's serious tone and gruesome special effects, while also boasting a likable cast, including Corey Feldman as Tommy Jarvis. Crispin Glover's Jimmy Mortimer is a memorable character for a number of reasons, the first of which being an outstanding dance he performs early on in the film. How come you turn that off? Additionally, his death scene at the hands of Jason is still an effective shock as he shouts out loud for a corkscrew before getting it in the hand. Jimmy is then cleaved by Jason, and we bid farewell to a standout series performance. Ted, hey, Ted, where the hell's the corkscrew? Number 14, Bedfold, Freddy vs. Jason. Although Freddy vs. Jason is arguably more of an Elm Street movie, this didn't mean that Jason Voorhees couldn't get in just as many memorable moments. Case in point, this fan-favorite kill that occurs early on in the film. As Freddy Krueger is still summoning up enough strength to revisit his old stomping grounds, Trey Cooper is the repugnant boyfriend of Gibbs Smith, and we pretty much hate him right from the jump. So what happens next doesn't really break our hearts. stabbed. Let's go with Energetically by Jason and folded in half while lying face down in a bed. We've heard of Craftmatic adjustable beds, but this is ridiculous. Number 13, Poor Shelly, Friday the 13th Part 3. Sheldon Shelley Finkelstein is one of the more beloved characters of the Friday the 13th franchise for a number of reasons. For starters, he's supremely likable, a genuinely good, if socially awkward, guy who the audience is rooting for the entire way. Tragically, it's his death that serves as the means for Jason to acquire his iconic hockey mask, since Shelley just couldn't leave his love of horror movies behind, and it ultimately costs him his life. <laughs> That'll teach you a valuable lesson. A beautiful girl like you should never go out in the dark alone. <laughs> Finkelstein is trying his best to woo Vera by dressing up and scaring her, but it backfires, leaving him alone as Jason stalks in the shadows. Worse yet, when discovered by Chili, she still thinks he's faking, but he isn't. Get up! Shelly, enough is enough! Oh my God. Number 12, RV Ride. Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives is a fan-favorite entry from the franchise, a movie that never takes itself too seriously while still providing many memorable scenes. This one, in particular, starts off with a little bit of humor, but ultimately ends with one breathtaking and badass final shot. The amorous antics between Nikki and Court are largely played for laughs, as is the exaggerated manner in which Jason shoves Nikki's face into the bathroom mirror. This is great! The sequence ends, however, with Voorhees standing triumphantly atop the wrecked RV, a striking and fearsome image against the night sky as Crystal Lake's most feared killer makes his way home. Number 11, Crazy Ralph Gets It, Friday the 13th, Part 2. Crazy Ralph was a mainstay for the first Friday the 13th film, a local kook who seems to know a bit about the history of Camp Blood and warns anyone and everyone to beware of its death curse. You're going to Camp Blood, ain't you? God damn it, Ralph, get out of here. Go on, get. Leave people alone. You'll never come back again. Oh, shut up, Ralph. It's got a death curse. That said, it's a shame Ralph couldn't be bothered to take his own advice since it's his own curiosity about the place that gets him killed in Friday the 13th Part 2. He returns to the campgrounds after warning a new group of kids about the place's sour history. 
but is caught from behind by Jason and strangled with barbed wire. (laughs) Number 10, Sheriff Garris. Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. We mentioned earlier how Jason Lives is decidedly lighter in tone than many of its predecessors. This usually works in its favor, but there's nothing funny about the death of Sheriff Mike Garris late during the film's climax. That's because Garris doesn't play into the sort of hard-assed and stubborn caricatures of law enforcement that usually present themselves in horror movies. Instead, his motivations are primarily in the interest of keeping people safe, particularly his daughter Megan. Thus, when Jason literally folds Garris in half while the sheriff is trying to keep him at bay, we can't help but feel some real sympathy and grief for Megan at the loss of her father. Number 9. Paintballing. Friday the 13th, Part 6. Jason Lives. Conversely, this other scene from Jason Lives is absolutely played up for laughs, an intentional and satirical take on the body count nature of slasher movies. Here, a group of weekend warriors are playing paintball in the woods and basically playing for keeps. Then, naturally, Jason Voorhees shows up and it all goes pear-shaped. The bandanas that spell out dead take on a whole new meaning as Voorhees wastes his victims. And sure, these folks are relatively innocent, but we spend so little time getting to know them that their appearance and loss just washes over us in the blink of an eye. Wait a second. What was that? What? Nothing. I could swear I heard something. I'm hungry. Oh, God. Be quiet. Number 8, Eye Pop, Friday the 13th, Part 3. The third entry in the Friday the 13th franchise was an outlier for a number of reasons. For starters, it was the only film to have a bitch and disco theme as its main title. Beyond this, Friday the 13th Part 3 was also developed to cash in on the popular 3D craze of the time, with many seemingly pointless shots being included just to benefit from the technology. However, one scene fans can all agree on is the eye-popping death of Rick Bombay late in the film. Everybody else has taken off and left us. You wouldn't do that. Well, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to go outside and take a look around. We're actually led to believe that Rick might survive to confront Jason, but his hope is dashed when Voorhees strikes from behind, squeezing Bombay's head so hard that the eye pops out to the audience in over-the-top fashion. Number 7, Uppercut. Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Operator, this is an emergency. Give me the police. You know, if you gotta go down to Jason Voorhees, you might as well go down swinging, right? Julius Goff finds this out the hard way as he gives Jason his best shot during their confrontation in Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. The boxing prodigy actually gives Voorhees a few good licks before finally punching himself to exhaustion. Jason, slightly dazed at best, but still at full strength, then returns fire with a single punch of his own, literally knocking Gauze block off. It's a scene many fans rewound again and again during the VHS video heyday. Take your best shot. Mother f- Number six, Handstand No More, Friday the 13th, Part 3. Do you want a beer or not? The next entry on our list is memorable for its setup, execution, and the implications of what we cannot see from the frame alone. That's because the death of Andy Beltrami in Friday the 13th Part 3 is shown from an odd angle, as a young man is looking up at Jason Voorhees while doing a handstand. Unfortunately, it's also the last thing Beltrami sees, as Jason slices him in half in the most tender of areas, leaving us wincing at the very thought. You don't actually see much gore in the scene, but its impact is still felt, 
thanks to the interesting cinematography and sound design. Number 5. Goodbye Alice Friday the 13th Part 2 the final girl trope in slasher movies was still being developed and explored in an embryonic way when Alice Hardy first made her scream and cheer in the original Friday the 13th. Her victory over Pamela Voorhees and subsequent survival made us appreciate how resourceful and capable she was as a heroine. This is part of what makes her demise in Friday the 13th Part 2 so bittersweet. Granted, her send-off is shockingly satisfying in a way, as she continues to convalesce at home after the events of the first film. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, Pamela's head is in the fridge, an ice pick is in Alice's head, and we have to bid adieu to one of our favorite Scream Queens. <laughs> Number 4. Sleeping Bag Friday the 13th Part 7. The New Blood it's a scene so beloved by fans that it was even parodied in Jason X over a decade later. <laughs> to be fair, the sleeping bag death in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, isn't performed with the same exaggerated comedic effect, but it's certainly effective nonetheless. Judy Williams wasn't a main character in the film. In fact, she's basically there solely as cannon fodder, a brief side plot that exists to place another notch on Jason's belt. Her bright idea to hide in a sleeping bag from Voorhees gets the Darwin Award it deserves, being bashed against a tree. Bye-bye, Judy. <laughs> Number 3. Bed Spear Friday the 13th Part 2 it seems as if the folks behind Friday the 13th Part 2 were so enthralled with the iconic Kevin Bacon bed sequence from the original that they just had to try it again. This time, however, director Steve Miner and crew took inspiration from the Italian Giallo and ripped off a scene from Mario Bava's A Bay of Blood when shooting this death scene for lovers Jeff and Sandra. There's no denying the similarities as the couples are both impaled by a spear as they're in bed together. But the Friday folks probably figured no one would notice if they mimicked a comparatively obscure European import. We see you, though, guys. We see you. <laughs> Number 2. Machete. Friday the 13th, Part 2. Vicky, is that you? Okay, so we admit it. We're horrible people. Were those kids who, like Julius's death earlier on our list, rewound this bit over and over again on our VCRs. And truthfully, we feel bad about it, because Mark Jarvis certainly didn't deserve what happened to him in Friday the 13th Part 2. This was still at the point in the series where most Friday films had likable characters. So when wheelchair user Mark gets a machete to the face and rolls down an unfairly long set of stairs, it comes as kind of a shock. And to be honest, we're not entirely sure if the filmmakers shot this scene as intentionally humorous or simply spiteful, but it remains one of the most iconic Friday moments. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Liquid Nitrogen – Jason X It's rare that an entry so late in a horror franchise would contain such a memorable high point. But here we are in 2001 with Jason X and an absolutely killer scene. That pun is definitely intended too, because fans just couldn't stop talking about this kill when Jason X first debuted. For starters, it's gruesome and sort of stands apart from the comparatively light tone of the film's jokey outer space premise. Additionally, the execution of this scene where intern Adrian Thomas Hart has her face plunged into liquid nitrogen and then smashed is effectively troubling and graphic. Jason X may not be a perfect film, but this kill is as perfect as Voorhees ever achieved throughout his entire cinematic career. No! 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 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.